the slaying of Joshua Sprague. Slay him, spawn of the devil. I will drive an iron spike through the monster's skull, and that'll end witchcraft in Jericho Notch. Over the long deserted village of Jericho Notch, there hung a dank pall of evil. Terror lurked in the bad haunted schoolhouse at Spike's crossroads, and vestiges of revolting, ages old monstrosities writhed behind the yellowed pages of the book that told of the ordinance of the devil. It was night in the remote fastness of New England, and an old sedan crawled slowly up the winding mountain road. This rain! I, I can hardly see the road ahead, much less make out the highway signs. I'd better stop and check my map if I expect to find Jericho Notch tonight. No, there's a gas station ahead. The lights are out and it looks closed. But maybe I can wake someone to give me directions. Wake up in there. Fine time of night to wake a man. What do you want, stranger? I, I'm sorry, but I was afraid of losing my way in this rain. I'm looking for Jericho Notch. Can you tell me how to find it? At these words... A strange expression flitted across the visage of the man at the door. His voice was hushed. You want to go to Jericho Notch? But why? I'm a shop teacher, sir, and I need a job. Yesterday I saw an ad in a newspaper saying they needed a new shop teacher up here. So I drove up at once. Stranger, you must be mistaken. They don't need a new teacher in Jericho Notch because no one lives there. The town has been deserted for 200 years. D deserted but that can't be. I, I tell you I saw an advertisement in a newspaper. It must have been a printer's error. Jericho Notch is a ghost village. No one lives there but the bats. No, I'm going up there to find out for myself. Now, how do I get there? You're mighty stubborn, mister. I hope you don't regret it. All right, I'll tell you how to find it. Keep driving on this road for about five miles. Finally, you'll come to another crossroads. A spot where there's a huge oak tree with a spike driven into it at the height of a man's head. Folks call it Spike's Crossroads. Go left there, and you'll be in Jericho Notch. Again, the old school teacher got underway, this time with a strange sense of foreboding. What mysteries lay ahead? What would he find in Jericho Notch? So they said in my last job I'd not be hired again because of the bad ideas I'd conveyed to my students. Huh, we'll see. Suddenly, the heavens shuddered with the crackling boom of thunder. Lightning flickered and sent its quivering tongue towards earth. The spike in the oak tree. This is Spike's crossroads. I've got to bear left now. What? What the? The road's slippery and the car's skidding, just as if a giant hand were pushing it. Oh. Ah. Ah. Oh. Lucky the car wasn't too badly damaged. That was a bad skid. Huh. Looks like a house ahead. Through the trees. Maybe I can find shelter for the night. I'll try it. Made it. Why, that's a belfry up there with a huge iron bell. And the clapper's missing. This, this must be an old schoolhouse. As the school teacher shivered from the cold in the ancient building, he became aware of an atmosphere of dread menace, and yet somehow, of welcome. Those old benches, and that stove, it all seems so familiar, but how could it be? I've never been here before. It seems to me that I've heard my grandfather tell that our ancestors first settled in this part of New England. But that must have been ten generations ago, and we haven't been here since. And yet, I have the feeling that I know this schoolhouse, the feeling that I was meant to come here. Maybe I never saw that advertisement in the paper at all. As his thoughts explored the imponderable, the old teacher shuddered again from the biting cold. I'd better get a fire started in this stove. The sulfur matches should do the trick. Lucky someone left them here, almost as if I were expected. As the surging flames filled the room with glowing warmth, the teacher curiously picked up a dust-covered volume lying on the shelf. Huh, this looks as old as the schoolhouse itself. Yellowed parchment and bound in the style of the mid-18th century. Let's see what it's about. Ordinance of the Devil by Joshua Sprague. Ordinance of the Devil, what a strange title. And the author's name, it's, 
Joshua Sprague. But that can't be. That's... At that moment, there was a shattering roar, as of the stored-up thunder of centuries. Blinding light flashed through the room, equal to the blazing fury of a dozen suns. Thrown off his feet, the teacher reeled forward and lay there motionless, the ancient book still gripped tightly in his hand. How long he lay there, he could not say, or whether time was passing forward or backward. But the next thing he heard was a strange sound, a memory that tugged at his innermost soul that brought him back to consciousness. The bell. But I thought the clapper was gone. How can it be ringing? Strange. The cobwebs are gone and there are no bats flying about. The schoolroom is new. And my clothes, these ruffles and buckled shoes and this wig, I'm... I'm just like a school teacher of 200 years ago. Strange. It's unbelievable. And here come the students to school. Good morrow, Master Sprague. We have come to learn something about furniture for our dwellings. Never mind that for the moment. And then, as the young men sat in their serried rows expectantly, a powerful impulse dominated the teacher, seizing him completely. It was the impulse to control them, body and soul. Have you studied your text for today? Yeah, we have, Master Sprague. Good, then tell me, what is the lesson? The lesson is what you have taught us, Master Sprague, the ordinance of the devil. Ha, you have learned well. Who is the master of all things human? The devil is our master, sir. Yes, he rules the earth, and all things good are his foe. Yes, and witches, hobgoblins, bats, and werewolves are his servants. And we serve him too, as you have taught us, Master Sprague. Ha ha ha, you have done better than I thought you would. Yes, we are all servants of the evil one. Now, can you prove your allegiance? As you have taught us, Master Sprague, to do evil in his name. There, there, I see him. It is the devil and a host of evil ones. Come to join us. Ah! Hey, <laughs> ah! I see him too. Welcome, master. We are your slaves. Command us to do your will. Ah! And outside the schoolhouse. Devilish Sprague, evil one, it is not woodworking you teach, but the words of the devil. You've corrupted our young people for the last time. Let's go in there and fetch out the witch Sprague. Seize him. <laughs> we'll teach him a lesson. We have the proof on him. His book. Grab him. Drag him outside. You fools. Let me go. Let you go. Not until you're dead, Joshua Sprague. I will drive out his family and slay him. But will even that end his sorcery? It will. If we do it in a certain way... We must drive a spike through his accursed skull and nail him to an oak standing at a crossroads. That will crush the devil in his soul for ten generations. If any of his clan should return here within ten generations, they shall suffer the same punishment. Then what are we waiting for, dolts? Here's the oak tree. Aye, and here's the spike. And here's the hammer. Death. The same implacable, horribly shaped death that ended the careers of so many early New England witches was now about to seize Joshua Sprague. Say your prayers, Sprague, if you know any fit ones. No, no, spare me, spare me, I beg. I will not practice sorcery again. I swear it. Once again, rain slanted fiercely onto the shingled roof of the schoolhouse, and this time, it was on that stormy night when the old school teacher drove his car past Spike's crossroads. Dawn came, and with it the rain ceased. Through the forest walked two men. When the old fellow didn't show up again at my gas station, I figured he must have gotten lost up here, Sergeant. That's why I called you. We'll soon see, Fred. That's his car parked just off the road near the crossroads, and his tracks lead up towards the schoolhouse. The footprints go in, but they don't come out again. Reckon we'd better investigate. Look, a body lying across the room. It's the old school teacher, Sarge. He's dead. Hmm, 
He's got a big sliver of metal right through his skull. Do you think it was murder, Sarge? I reckon not. He made the mistake of building a blazing fire in an old stove that hadn't been lit for years. It exploded, looks like, and drove the iron into his head. Just an accident. What's that book he's holding? Oh, just some dusty old textbook, I guess. Funny, he's holding it so tightly, I can't pry it loose. Suppose we'll have to let him be buried still holding on to it. We'd better head down to my station and phone for her, say, Sarge? Let's see if we can identify him first, Fred. See if he's got a wallet. Maybe that'll show his name. Here it is. You look, Sarge. Hmm. Here's his driver's license. His name was Joshua Sprague. I'd better write that down so I don't forget it. Joshua Sprague. So it was that Joshua Sprague returned to the scene where his ancestor had died centuries before. And there he suffered the same dread fate. Or did he? Might it all have been the split-second fantasy of a dying man? Or did it really happen? Perhaps the answer lies within the pages of the ancient book clutched in the teacher's death-stiffened fingers. But no one will ever read that book, for it was buried with Joshua Sprague.